So the order sheet has fields for size and bread that are represented by radio inputs in the form markup. And these are grouped together since a sandwich can only be either small or large, never both. Same goes for the choice of bread. I'll go back to the order sheet component TS file and create the control representation for these. Since these controls are related, I'll make use of a control group here. And I'll add a property to the object literal that I'm providing to the top level control group. This one I'll name sizes. And I can set that to a call to formbuilder.group and pass that an object literal. Putting controls into control groups not only allows you to logically group related controls, it has the benefit of the control group being able to report the validity of the controls as a group. So while the form is designed to have both of these radio controls set to not checked by default, I'm going to want to make sure the user checks at least one. The control group here is going to make that easy for me to handle. I will cover that in a later video when I go over validation. To represent a form field of type radio, I create a control just like the others. So I'll start by adding a new property named size small and use the form builder and call control. But to make this support the radio input, I need to make use of an Angular class named radio button state. So I need to import that up at the top. Again, all of these form classes are found in at angular slash common. So I add radio button state to that import list. And in the form builder control function, I can send it a new radio button state. This constructor expects two arguments, a boolean to specify if the radio is checked or not, and the value for the form object field, which will be a string. This is a representation of the HTML input form element attributes of checked and value. So I'll give this a string value of small. Okay, I can make the size large property in the same fashion, setting this one to false as well, and giving it a string value of large. Now I can do the same thing for the breads. I'll create a new property named breads on the top level control group and set that to a call to form builder.group and send that in an object literal with three properties for the three types of bread in the order sheet. One being bread wheat roll and set it to form builder control and pass it a new radio button state with false and the string wheat roll. Another being bread white roll, set it to form builder control pass it a new radio button state with false and white roll. And a final one being bread sourdough roll, set it to form builder control, pass it a new radio button state with false and sourdough roll. So when you want to represent radio buttons in your form model, you create a control group for them and a control for each, making use of the radio button state class for their values.